patellofemoral maltrucking syndrome. The patellofemoral joint is the joint between the kneecap and the groove that's formed at the end of the thigh bone, which is called the trochlea. This joint has the thickest articular cartilage in the body, but it needs this cartilage to absorb both compressive and shear forces. Every time you bend your knee, particularly with a load on it, the cartilage surfaces engage at about 30 degrees of that knee bend. When you lunge or you go up and down stairs, this joint has to absorb as much as 10 to 12 times your body weight in force. High aligned cartilage has a very unique architecture. So the top layers have collagen fibers oriented horizontally to resist shear forces, whilst the deeper couple of layers have collagen pointing vertically to absorb the compressive and impact forces. When the kneecap doesn't track smoothly in its groove, it can lead to increased shear forces on the cartilage, which can then abrade and irritate the cartilage. Even though there is no deep or significant damage to the cartilage itself, the excessive friction on the surface layers can lead to pain, swelling and stiffness that often limits exercise capacity and it can persist for months. It's important to realise that this is more of an inflammatory response where the knee joint lining detects small microscopic cartilage fragments rather than any significant visible cartilage damage in most cases. Cartilage has no nerve endings, so we know that it doesn't generate the pain. Sitting for any length of time often leads to pain and stiffness on standing and runners are particularly prone to this condition, which is why in the past it was often referred to as moviegoer's knee and runner's knee. The accepted terminology for this condition now is patellofemoral pain syndrome, but maltracking and chondromalacia are still used. Most of the features of patellofemoral pain syndrome are clinical and functional because it's a dynamic process. A classical history is one of pain and the presence of some of the known risk factors. Particularly, we see a patients with pain during a squat or lunge movement. And on examination, there's often tenderness of the edge of the kneecap, as well as a grinding sensation or crepitus. The major diagnoses to exclude here are instability of the kneecap, that is dislocations, and a condition called excessive lateral pressure syndrome, where there's a much more severe of mechanical overload on the outer part of the patella due to malalignment. Imaging findings such as a high seated kneecap or thinning of the cartilage on MRI also support the diagnosis of patellofemoral pain syndrome, but these are not essential for the diagnosis. So who's at risk of patellofemoral pain syndrome? There are some common features that are known to be associated with patellofemoral pain, including a higher seated kneecap, a smaller kneecap, a flatter groove for the kneecap, which we call trochlear dysplasia, in fact, any alignment that tends to make the patella shift more or tilt to the outside of the knee increases the contact forces on this area. We also know that females are at higher risk. Patients with poor stabilizer muscle activity around the hip and knee are at higher risk and patients with short hamstrings and weak quadricep muscles. It needs to be made clear to patients that surgery is virtually never appropriate for patellofemoral pain syndrome unless there's a large malalignment, large cartilage lesion, or patella dislocations are occurring. Even when there is marked wear of cartilage, and in fact osteoarthritis of the patellofemoral joint, non-surgical treatments should be targeted first line because surgery doesn't appear to be highly effective. The best consensus guidelines tell us that treatment for patellofemoral pain syndrome has to be individualised and based on a full assessment of the patient's specific contributors to their pain. Evidence shows us that multimodal treatment programs lasting at least six weeks have a very significant benefit for pain and function. These programs incorporate education about the pain and the most suitable activities customised patella taping, which usually makes a very significant difference early on, 
sometimes the use of orthotics and anti-inflammatory medications. In recalcitrant cases, especially when the tissues around the kneecap, such as the fat pads, are very inflamed, a single cortisone injection can provide marked pain relief and contribute to optimised rehabilitation by reducing this pain, ultimately allowing patients to do the required rehabilitation, progressive strengthening, targeted hip, quadriceps and hamstrings exercises that are the most important aspects of long-term management. I hope you found this video useful. I create these educational videos to help empower patients by allowing them to understand their problem, treatment options and the expected recovery. Please remember this lecture is for educational purposes only, does not constitute the giving of medical advice and no patient-doctor relationship is formed.